Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's our next example of how to calculate how the distributed load affects a beam and how to find the reactionary forces on the two supports at A and B. Notice that the shape of that curve right here is the shape of a parabola and if that's indeed the case, which it is in this example, we can see that the force on the left side starts at 300 newtons per meter and ends on the right side at 1200 newtons per meter. But it's basically a parabolic shape on top of a rectangular shape. If we draw a dashed line across like this, you can see that again we have two areas. We have the area at the bottom, let's call it A1, and the area at the top, let's call it A2. The purpose, or not the purpose, but the, the way in which we can solve this problem is by finding the centroid of each of the two regions and then find the centroid for the entire load. The centroid for the first region is relatively easy because we know that it's a rectangle, therefore the centroid must be right smack at the middle. So let's use blue to indicate where the location of the centroid would be for the first area. And then we can imagine that the centroid is probably somewhere in this neighborhood for the second area. Not quite that far to the right, but the A2 is in the way, so I'll just put it right there. That would be then the distance to the centroid for area 1, let's call that X1, and the distance of centroid two, let's write it like this, this is x2, we need to find x1 and x2, and then we need to find the centroid for the entire uh, distributed load, and let's use red for that, the centroid for the entire load is probably somewhere here, that means we need to find x, the x coordinate of the centroid for the entire load. To find the centroid of the first load, that's relatively easy, it must be right halfway in between, therefore x sub 1 must be equal to the half distance from 0 to 6 meters, which is 3 meters. Now to find the x-coordinate for the centroid of the parabolic portion of the curve. We know that the centroid, let's call this the centroid 2, can be found by using the coordinates like this. This is 3a, oh, let me take that back, yes, 3a divided by 4, and 3h divided by 10. Now what are a and what are h? a is the value when we go over here, in this case that would be 6 meters, and h would be the value going into the vertical distance right there. We don't care about the vertical distance, we only care about the horizontal distance, which means that the x-coordinate, the centroid of the parabolic portion, is equal to 3 times the full length of the beam divided by 4. X sub 2 can then be found by saying it's 3 times the full length of the beam, 6 meters, divided by 4, 18 divided by 4, which is 4.5, 4.5 meters is the centroid of the parabolic portion of the distributed load. Now we're ready to find this value right here, the x coordinate of the centroid of the entire load. We can find it as follows. The x-coordinate is equal to the sum of all the x-coordinates of each individual piece, in this case there's two of them, times the force caused by each, and let's just go sub i, divided by the sum of all the forces of the entire load. Okay, let's go ahead and plug that in. The x-coordinate for the first region, we know that's equal to 3 meters, and the total force represented by this area, the force is really represented by area, therefore A1 can be found by taking the width, which is 6 meters, and multiplying it times the height, which is 300 newtons per meter. 6 times 300 is 1800 newtons. Notice that the meters cancel out, which goes in here, 1800 newtons. We add to that the x-coordinate of the centroid of the second region, which we said was 4.5 meters. And now we need to find the area of that parabolic curve. For that, we're going to need a little bit of integration. Area 2 can be found as the integral of all the small da2s, and the da2s can be represented, let me use a different color, uh, by a small little da. So here, this is a small little da2. Now we need to find the height of this times the width. Now we have a problem. We don't know the equation of this. We could find the equation since we know the width here, we know the height there, 
However, there's a better way to do that. It turns out we already know a shortcut method to find the area of a of an caused by a parabolic curve like this. We know that the area, the secondary method, would be A2 is equal to the width, let's call it A, times the height, let's call it H, divided by 3. So in this case, instead of doing the integration, for which we need to know the equation, we can say instead A2 is equal to the width, A, which is equal to 6 meters, and the height at the very end here, that would be the difference of 1,200 newtons per meter minus 300 newtons per meter, that is 900 newtons per meter, and then dividing it by 3. 3 goes into 6 twice, this is therefore equal to 1,800 newtons. So the force contribution of the parabolic portion is also 1,800 newtons, and we can put that in here, 1,800 newtons. Now we have to divide that by the total force, 1,800 newtons plus 1,800 newtons. That will give us the x-coordinate of the centroid of the total distributed load. 1,800 times 3 plus 1,800 times 4.5 gives us 13,500 13, newton meters divided by 3,600 newtons. And there we get the x-coordinate divided by 3,600 is 3.75 meters. 3.75 meters, which is the x-coordinate of the centroid of the distributed load. So this becomes 3.75 meters. Now that we have that, we can then say all the force all the distributed load acts as if it works on this very one single point right here. So if the entire force acts on this point, we can then say we can find F sub B and F sub A. What we're going to do is take a pivot point right there. We're going to calculate the moment at point A, which we know is equal to zero because it's a static situation. The moment at A is equal to zero, which is equal to, first of all, we have the distributed load acting at the centroid, this is force sub d, the distributed load, which is equal to a total of 3,600 newtons, and it acts in a clockwise direction, so let's call that a negative moment, so that's negative 3,600 newtons, multiplied times the distance relative to the point of rotation, which in this case is 3.75 meters, Plus, we say plus because the force at B is going to give this a positive torque, and that's F sub B multiplied times the distance at which this acts relative to the point A, that's 6 meters, which means in this case the force at B is equal to 3,600 newtons times 3.75 meters, divided by 6 meters, and that gives us the reactionary force at B. That's 2,250 newtons. We can do the same to find the reactionary force at A. We can put the pivot point at B, do exactly the same thing, or actually even easier, we can say that the sum of all the forces in the y direction adds up to zero. We have F sub A in a positive direction, F sub B in a positive direction minus the force caused by the load. Let's just write F sub L. I know I wrote F sub B there, but I think I like F sub L better. The force caused by the load. We already know the force of the load. We already know the force at B. That makes it easy to find the force at A. The force at A is equal to, we move this across, the force of the load minus the force at B. The force of the load is 3,600 newtons minus the, for the load at B, which is 2,250 newtons. The difference, 1,350 newtons, which is the load at A. So the reactionary force, or I should say the reactionary force at A. So at A, we have a force of 1,350 newtons. At B, we have a force of 2,250 newtons. Together, adds up to 3,600, which is the entire distributed load on the beam. But the whole load 
appears to be acting at the centroid, which is 3.75 meters to the left of point A. And that's how we do these types of problems.